Good morning, friend. I'm glad again to be in your space. Today, Tuesday, the 13th day of October. You know, gradually we are getting to the mid day, mid point of October, and it means that the year remains just about 11, 14 weeks. Two months, say, give or take nine weeks, two, three weeks more, and that's about 12 weeks remaining in the year. But I pray for you that you will end this year well. The days will count for you as for in Jesus' name. Yesterday, remember, we talked about relationships. And we said some people come into your life for a reason. And I pray for you that grace of God will avail for you to know why everyone comes into your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again. Again today, as we continue the series of relationship, God, please speak to us. Let our life, O oh God, get better by the revelation thereof. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we thank God for the gift of life. Some saw yesterday, they are not here today. Some were here last month, but this month they are not. But you and I will see the end of the year in Jesus' name. So brethren, today we want to talk about Certain things happen in relationship for your growth. And I'm reading from Proverbs 27, 9 and 10. Proverbs 27, 9 and 10. You remember our test yesterday was Proverbs 18, 24. I read. It says, ointment and perfume rejoice the arts. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by head hearty counsel. Thy own friend, thy father's friend, forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is far off. A lot of times we take people for granted and then we don't know because your neighbor got you angry last time, you decided to say that I'm not going to talk to this neighbor again. You have just told us, a friend, a neighbor that is close to you is better than your uh, family. If anything happens to you, they are supposed to be the first point of call. Before you call your family members to call, something will have happened. You don't begin to keep malice or fence off your neighbor. You don't begin to keep malice or fence off your old friend. Or because your status has changed. Those guys that used to play with before, decided not to play with them. Sir, ma. And I'm speaking to people that are my offices, politicians, or people that are just promoted to a luxury office. Your friends, when you were nobody, they are your best friends. Your friends that you know when the level change, they will only tell you based on the level. They won't tell you the truth. They won't tell you if you are changing your personality. What takes you to where you are? Today is your winning, uh, winning, winning, winning team and it's your winning streak. But if you decide to change it because of status are changed, you are changing what takes you don't change a winning team, you only make it better by looking at your pros and cons. And that's what the scripture is saying your father's friend, people that know you when you are not, people that can tell you the truth, you don't change them. God has brought some people, they may not be the best people you want, but God has brought them for your growth. Relationship must be valued. Relationship must be worked out. If they are well drunk, yes, you can keep them at arm's length or preach to them. But if they don't want to change, then you can change them. But as long as they tell you the truth, I know the good thing about life is that when somebody is telling the truth, you will know. You might not like it, but you will know. And that's what the Bible is saying. Better is your neighbor than your brother that is far off. Job had some friends. He got to a point, if you read from verse 40, I mean chapter 40 of Job, you know that from 38 or that about Job began to hate his friends. Because they were mocking the situation, they were condemning him. They were not friends at that time that are his fans. They were his critics. But they were there for a purpose. If Job had not gotten offended, maybe Job, the book of Job would have ended in chapter 3 or perhaps chapter 2 or perhaps chapter 4. But Job became offended. 
His friend criticism got to him. Don't let criticism get to you and don't let praise get to you. Manage them both properly. You sieve them through the, the sieve of life and pick what you think is relevant that will help you. Beloved brethren, until Job, if you read Job 42, the Bible says from verse 7 to 12 that God told Job, your friends are going to come to you, you will pray for them. And when you pray for them, your things will change. And it was until he prayed for them that things changed for him. I conclude by reading a scripture in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. And I read to you verse 50 alone. Verse 50 alone because of time. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and lay hands on Jesus and took him away. That is Jesus talking to Judas Iscariot. Jesus needed Judas Iscariot for fulfillment of his purpose. It's painful, it is a betrayer, but it was needful. Joseph needed the push from his brothers because his destiny is in Egypt. And he had to pay for his transportation to get to Egypt. And circumstances of life push him to get to palace. I pray for you. The people God has brought into your life for your growth, may you not push them away. May you be able to manage them till your growth come to pass. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.